Oh hey! I was just reading some herbal recipes in this book, but since you're here, I guess we can go ahead and get started with the second episode of our color series. On the last episode, I asked you all what type of ideas you'd want to see in terms of color and theme combinations, and you guys sent out a lot of fun ideas, but the one that was most voted for was a purple witchy celestial theme, which we will be doing in this video. Before we begin, shall we be reminded of the rules? Here is a quick rundown of all the important rules for the color series. Rule number one, the color chosen has to be used, no exception. Rule number two, the main color of the pieces has to be the color chosen. The amount of secondary colors have to complement the chosen color and be used to a minimum. It cannot take the attention away from the color, but rather push it forward. Rule number three, the designs cannot copy any designs from previous color series episodes. There can be elements from previous patterns added, but not an exact copy. Rule number four, there has to be three designs minimum and it should include one wearable and one accessory. Other optional things are amikurumi, home decor, etc. And lastly, rule number five, each color has to also correspond with the theme. You all chose the color and theme for this episode, which is purple and a witchy celestial theme. Now that we know the rules, let's go ahead and figure out what to do for this theme because at the moment I literally have no idea. Um, I was really surprised that you all chose this one. I really thought it was going to be the mermaid one that was chosen, but I really like that it happened this way because it's more of a challenge and that's basically the whole reason for the series is to be challenging. So let's go ahead and figure out what yarn we're going to use and get to designing. Okay. This is all of the yarn that I'm thinking of using for this video. Um, I also have some more in here, but I wasn't going to take them all out because it's replicas of the same colors in this box. But there's a lot of black, purples, and then grays and beige. And I thought those colors would complement the purples very well. So now it's time for me to start designing with all of this in mind. As I began to design for the theme, I kept a lot of different elements and characteristics in mind. For a witchy celestial theme, I tend to think of elements such as moons, suns, stars, crystals, candles, dark rooms, cats, and herbs. For clothing characteristics, I thought of clothes that sparkles, flowy sleeves, tiered skirts and dresses, sheer and laced fabrics, velvet, and corsets. I tried to implement some of these elements into the design while figuring out what exactly I wanted to make, and eventually, I figured it out. The first design is a dress. I thought attempting to crochet a dress would fit the theme, plus I've never crocheted a dress before, so that's a win-win in terms of a challenge. A lot of quote-unquote witchy dresses are long and flowy with layered sleeves, so that was the idea I decided to go for. For the dress design, I went over how exactly I wanted to work through the process since I wanted it to be exactly how I was picturing it. I drew out a step-by-step -step diagram for myself breaking down everything I needed to do in those specific areas, which probably looks very confusing to you, but it actually helped me get the ideas into exact steps instead of being all mushed inside my head. I was wondering if I should even add the sleeves, but I think that's the part that really adds the witchy element to the dress, so I decided to keep them in. After I got the diagram completed, I went through the yarn again to choose what would best fit the dress. I went through the yarn and I decided to use these for the dress. I'm thinking of using either this one or these for the top part of the dress and then throwing in some sparkle to make it more like galaxy celestial. And then for the bottom part of the dress, I'm thinking of combining all of these. And then after I finish the bottom of the dress, I'm gonna work on the arms and see whatever I have left I can use for the arms to make it look more unique and texturized and stuff. And I think this would be really pretty to incorporate as well as these different textures like in this yarn and adding in some mohair for like some more fuzzy detail. And then possibly this wool right here, this looks like it would be pretty cool to add, but we'll see. So I think I am all set to get started with this dress. Getting started with the dress, I first winded up all the twisted yarn since I don't have a winder and, uh, well, that, that took all day. <laughs> 
but it was worth it since I got it all done and I won't have to worry about it later. The next day, I finally got started with the top of the dress. I decided to use my pattern for the bandeau I did in my summer crochet video for the top as it would be the easiest. I was wondering if I should do that or do a tie back through the sleeves of the dress, but decided to not make it super complicated and went with the bandeau top. I used half double crochet to start. When I was done, I slip stitched the ends to of the panel together and then tried on the top. I thought it was too spacey in the middle as well as too short, so I decided to unravel it and start over but with single crochet instead for 26 rows. After, I tried on the top again and added stitch markers to the front to where I decided to add a little corset area, then on the top where I'd want the arms to be, and then in the back where the arm straps would end. I started on the middle section of the dress with a small yarn since I thought it would be cute, but I forgot how hard it was to work with a smaller hook for me, so I just took the small yarn off and used a different one. I combined the black sparkly thread with a lighter purple and made two single crochet rows before working a stitch I've never done before. I have no idea what it's called, but I thought it was super cute. All I did was yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over and pulled through, then yarn over again and insert my hook into the stitch below the stitch I just worked in. After I yarn over, pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook. I repeated this all the way until the end. At the end, I chained one, turned my work, and worked one single crochet row. Occasionally for this section, I changed my yarn to the purple yarn I used for the top of the dress just to add some contrast in the colors, but I'm not too sure it looks good yet, so trusting the process as I continue to work on it. So last night, I finished working on the top part of the dress and the center part of the dress. And now I'm about to work on the skirt section, but before I do, I have to add like little brackets here. I'm probably either going to connect right here or connect right here, and then like I'll do one row of single crochet just to even this out, and then I'll add like little brackets so that I can add a ribbon. And I'm thinking instead of making like a drawstring ribbon, I might use an actual ribbon that's purple to go through the brackets because I think that might make it more cute and unique. For the brackets, I first slip stitched down the row to make it more neater and then on the second row, half double crocheted into the slip stitches that I just made. On the third row, I chain two and skip two stitches before working a half double crochet into the third stitch. I repeated this all the way until the end and did one half double crochet in the last stitch before cutting off. Then I repeated all this for the other side. Okay, so this is what the dress is looking like so far. And here is what the little bow tie part looks like with me having it on. I think it's really, really, really cute. And um, this bow right here is thin and I'm just using it as a placeholder so I can start the skirt part of the dress. But I'm gonna go to the store and get a more thicker yarn so it can fill up the spaces here and it won't just look like it's cinching in right there. It'll actually be more full but i think this is really cute it could honestly be like a cute little top if you want to wear one um this part right here is awkward but um i'm okay with that because when i connect the skirt i'm going to let me see if i can zoom in when i connect the skirt i'm going to like chain a little chain right here and then it's going to kind of like pull it together so then that part won't be there. And then this right here is just to make sure that this the dress is like fitted perfectly around your torso. This is a very trust the process type of project and I'm getting to the point where I'm like, okay, it's gonna come out cute, but We'll see how it turns out with everything else. While I had the top section of the dress on, I attached my yarn and started working on the skirt section. I chained six for the gap in the middle of the corset part of the dress and then single crocheted on the other side so that it attaches and then continue to single crochet for the rest of the row. For the second row, I worked into each chain stitch with a single crochet and then completed the row like normal.
on the third row, I took the yarn I used for the first part of the dress and added my sparkly thread with it and added two single crochets into every stitch of the row, which began the skirt section of the dress. After I did the row of increases, it was now time to bring out the rest of the yarn and just go at it. I chose a random yarn and started working on the skirt section. Sometimes I did half double crochet, sometimes I did double. Whatever my heart desired is what I did for a total of 6 rows. On row 7, I decided to add another set of increases into each stitch so the layers would be a perfect amount for me. I then took a little break to go visit my dog at my grandma's house and gave her a new toy. After I got back home, I continued to work on the first layer of the skirt and even used this fabric for the first time in the crochet and it was a bit hard to work with if you can tell but I still think it looks pretty cute. So far, this is what I have for the dress. I'm kind of iffy about it. It is still definitely a trust the process type of thing. Um, I like how the bottom is coming out. I'm gonna start the second layer after this row right here and then I'm gonna try and make it go to like right there or something. Um, and then I still have to add the sleeves. So I'm gonna try to trust the process and everything, but I'm still kind of iffy. And I'm thinking I kind of might want this to be in the back. And let me show you what it looks like. This is what it would look like if that tie part was in the back. And I kind of like this more cause I have a cute belt that I can add right here. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, Hopefully it goes well. On row 16, I worked into the back loop of each stitch for the entire row so that I would be able to attach my yarn later for the second layer of the dress. I then did one more row for the layer before cutting off and attached my yarn underneath the first layer to start the second. I worked into the front loops that weren't worked into on row 16 with normal crochets for the first row and then continued working rows on the second layer. It's basically the same pattern I did for the skirt in the green crochet video, but I'm only doing two layers for the dress since I want the skirt section to be mini. I worked on the second layer of the skirt and while I did, I watched an old show I used to watch when I was younger called Make It or Break It and while watching it as an adult, I can say it's still pretty good. After I finished the second layer of the skirt, which was only six rows, I put the dress on and got started with the sleeves, which I had no idea how I was going to do by the way. I just started by making a chain of 40 to wrap over my shoulders and attached it to the stitch markers that I added a while ago and made sure the chain was comfortable but also tight enough so that it would actually stay on my shoulders. I then began to work in the round to start on the top of the sleeve. I then half double crocheted down the row and into the chain stitches to start the first row of the sleeve. I I followed a similar pattern to my coquette top from my fall crochet video for the start of the sleeves, which was three rows of half double crochet around, one row of decreases in every other stitch, and three rows of normal half double crochet. And then after that, I knew it was time for experimenting. Okay, so. The sleeves are coming together nicely. Um, after I finished those initial rows that I talked about earlier, I went ahead and did it on the other sides so I could just get it out the way and then just focus on the experimental parts of the sleeves. But really quick, I wanted to show that I finally figured out why I'm not really liking the dress so far. Um, when I tried it on earlier, I realized the torso is a bit too long for my liking. And then I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix it because I already finished the skirt part. And then I thought, what if I try the dress on again and then figure out what part I would like. I would have made the skirt start and then add rows so it could be like, this could be the first layer and this would be the second layer and this would be the third. So I might just connect some yarn and then work until it gets to about like this length or so. So there can be three rows of the skirt part and I'll like the dress a lot better. But the only thing is this part will definitely have to be in the back instead of the front. So I think this right here is gonna be the front of the dress. And then I'm gonna just connect the yarn like right here or here and then start the skirt. So I'm going to add the first layer of the skirt section and then I'm going to go back into the sleeves. 
I tried on the dress and pulled up the skirt to the level I wanted the first layer to be at and then added a stitch marker so I can remember where to attach the yarn. The sleeves look good so far though, so that made me happy. I attached my yarn to the bottom of the row above where I put the stitch markers and a bit to the side in case a seam is noticeable. I then worked two half double crochets into each stitch. When I reached the ribbon section, I just worked straight across with half double crochet and continued normally down the row. At the end of the row, I chained one, turned my work, and continued working two double crochets into each stitch. I then worked 14 rows of random stitches and yarn before deciding that the arms were perfect how they were. I just finished doing the last couple of rows for the last layer, which is actually the first layer after I attached it on here. And I was going to make the sleeves a lot longer, but I tried it on and I asked a couple of people what they thought of it being short now or should I add length to it. And everyone said that it looks really cute with the length like this and plus it's summertime so it just makes more sense to have them short and i honestly do really like it short and i feel like maybe next time in the future i can make one that has longer sleeves especially when i get a lot more yarn because the skirt section took out a lot of my yarn and like these two layers have the best yarn and then this one I was just like scrapping for different colors that would work. And had I known I wasn't gonna make the sleeves longer, I would have added more sparkly to the skirt part of the dress. And I'm still gonna have to go to the store and get a larger ribbon for this part, but I think this is gonna be the back because after trying it on, I think I do like wearing it on this side rather than with the bow in, in the front. But yeah, the dress is done. So I'm gonna have a video right here of me with the dress on because I can't in any way fix the framing right now, but this is what the dress looks like. Um, it's also really dark in here because it's about to thunderstorm and it's very fitting for this video, but I don't have that much lighting, so I'm gonna try and do this as fast as possible. But yeah, this is how the dress turned out to be. I really, really, really love how it came out. Um, I took some inspiration from the little fairy core dress that I did for the green crochet video, and I turned it into a dress. This was initially gonna be a long sleeve um, dress that was going to be having like flowy sleeves and everything but I was like I am running out of yarn to make it look the way that I want to like I have a lot of purple yarn but none of it was going to do what I wanted it to and I used the yarn that I wanted to use on the little skirt part. I also got this cute chain and I thought this would bring in the more celestial elements to this dress. So in the back is what I was gonna do for, this was gonna be the front of the dress with the bow tie, but I asked my friends and my mom and my boyfriend and they were like, yeah, it looks better this way and with the short sleeves. So yeah, this is how it turned out. I'm really happy with it. The second design is a star bag. I thought this would work due to the celestial galaxy theme and a star bag with a moon keychain would be really cute. I've always wanted to make one of these after seeing them around online and thought this would be the perfect chance to do so. For the materials, I used a couple of wool mix yarns from Paintbox and my sparkly yarn I have left over with the 5mm hook. For the star bag, I decided to use a tutorial since there was no way I would be able to create my own pattern for the bag. I went ahead and got started working according to the tutorial and honestly, the star bag was annoying to make. I went through like three different tutorials and was confused about the instructions, but then I found one that helped a lot. However, even after finding that tutorial, I was already in a bad mood from being confused, so I just wanted the bag to be over with and already decided in my mind to never make another star bag ever again. I know that I'm probably going to in the future, but at that moment, I was just really, really annoyed. 
I made two rows for each color so that the bag was big enough, which was a total of 11 rows, including the magic circle section. I thought it would be cool to add the sparkly thread to the front panel of the bag to give it the more galaxy theme, so I added the sparkly thread as I began working on the second panel. This was a very spontaneous decision, so I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. As I worked on it, I wasn't sure if I actually liked it or not and felt like I added a bit too much sparkle, so I began to spread it out by adding the sparkle to every other the row which made it a bit more appealing. At the end of the panel, I actually really liked the amount of sparkle the front panel had and now it was time to work on the handle. I found this little pattern online to make stronger straps and tried out the technique which was interesting since you have to work into the back loop of the stitch and the stitch below it but I realized that I was doing it wrong when the strap started to shrink in size so I took it apart and just decided to do a basic handle and then sew on fabric later. All I did was single crochet around my purple yarn and then when I got to where I wanted the opening of the bag to be, I chained 81 and then slip stitched that chain to the other side of the panel. I then worked half double crochet into the chain and then worked back and forth three times, making sure to attach the ends with slip stitches into the sides of the bag before starting a new row. I go more into detail about this in my crochet bag video. Once I was done with the strap, I single crocheted around the openings of both sides of the bag with the purple yarn to add more security on the straps. This is when I realized that I crocheted the right side of the back panel on the inside, but it was way too late to change it up. But after all that, the bag was done for now. I ordered a little keychain pack from Amazon, so I went ahead and got started on making the tiny little moon for the keychain with a free pattern online because my brain just can't comprehend amigurumi, especially making a pattern from scratch, and I wanted to save myself a little stress. I finished it and then stuffed it with some yarn scraps that I have saved up as I sewed it shut and then took the connecting part of the keychain and slipped it into the moon. I slipped it into the keychain part too and took some random tools from the toolbox we have because I can't find my jewelry pliers for the life of me and uh yeah i couldn't fix that so i just pushed it more into the moon so it looks circular and then the keychain was done putting the keychain onto the bag made me realize that i should have gotten the one that just snaps onto the strap but i still got it on Okay, the sun came out just in time for the second piece, which is the star bag. This came out really, really cute. It's very sparkly. And at first I thought the sparkle was too much in the middle. And then I started to do it in every other um, row and I thought that made it really cute. And then I also made this moon keychain which really got on my nerves a little bit, but it's just cause I'm not that good at amigurumi. Um, but I feel like I should have added a little bit of sparkle to the moon, but I think it's perfectly, it's fine. It's fine. I wouldn't change it. This is super cute. This is, I've always wanted to make a star bag and now I have one. Um, I'm gonna add some fabric on the inside at some point, probably sooner than you think. Um, cause I'm trying, mean, I might do a whole maintenance thing where I go through my crochet and I add fabric to my bags, I fix up anything that needs to be fixed up, and so on and so forth. And so I think that might be the time to do that. I was going to do it in this video, but I have no idea how to use the sewing machine and I don't want to ruin the bag by practicing on it. So I'm going to take my time and figure out what I'm supposed to do and everything before I do that. But yeah. That is the star bag. The third design is a cute mini cape. The design was pretty impromptu halfway working through the video, but I thought it would fit the theme since a lot of witches tend to wear capes and cloaks and having a cute mini one would fit perfectly. I decided to use a wool mix yarn and some sparkly yarn with a five millimeter hook. For the cape, I started with a chain of 41 and wrapped it around my shoulder neck area to make sure it was good enough to wrap around. Then I did one row of double crochet. For the second row of the cape, I added two double crochets into every stitch. Thank you. 
I then followed a pattern of one regular row and then one row of increasing into every other stitch for a total of nine rows or until the cape goes past your shoulders like this. So right here, I have a total of nine rows done with the pattern that I had on the screen prior with the run one row of double crochet and then one row increasing into each stitch, one row double crochet, one row increase every other stitch, and then that pattern of one row double crochet, one row every other stitch increase keeps going until the ninth row. And then right now I'm gonna continue doing regular double crochet all the way down and hopefully that turns into a cloak or a cape that I'm doing because this whole increasing thing is purely <laughs> experimental and I just hope it works. I tried on the cape after 14 rows and I thought it was a bit too roughly so I decided to take off the last set of increases before adding back 7 rows of double crochet. I tried it on after and the length was perfect for me so I tied off the yarn and started working on the collar by attaching the purple yarn to the top corner of the cape. I then worked single crochet back and forth for a total of 10 rows. I tied off the collar yarn and created a single crochet ruffle border with black and sparkly yarn across the entire border of the cape from the bottom corner to the other to add a bit more detail to it. I just single crocheted into each stitch three times which gave it a roughly texture. When I reached the collar section though, I just added one single crochet into each stitch leaving out the ruffle part. At the end of the row, I slip stitched into the first ruffle I made and tied off. After, I went to Joann's to find some ribbon and cool buttons I could use on the cape. I found this little clasp for the front that I enjoyed more than the ribbon and got a bundle of buttons to choose from to keep the collar secure. I went through the buttons and chose these to sew onto the collar. I started to sew the first button onto the collar and then realized that the collar wasn't in the right place that I wanted to, of course, so I cut the thread and started over, making sure the collar was in the right angle before sewing the button onto it. It was a bit hard putting the clasp on correctly, but I did it and the cape was complete. Okay, uh, yeah, the ponytails are falling and I'm just going to take them out. So, yeah. Here is my mini cape. So this design was very impromptu and very free-handed and I had no idea what I was doing, but I just trusted the process, which I'm happy about. I was gonna be like, no, this doesn't look right, but I was like, no, I wanna make a cape. I think it would be pretty cool. And at first I was gonna add like a little hood on it, but I really wanted to do one with a collar. And I thought it would also be cool if I added like little buttons to the collar. And at first this clasp was gonna be like a black ribbon, the black ribbon that I actually used on the dress. Um, but then I was like, this looks so much more fancy if I have the clasp, you know? But this is what it looks like. This is how it looks like from behind. And it's giving Game of Thrones. And there's this one girl from Game of Thrones that I feel like I could be. I'm gonna put her picture here. Um, all I need to do is perfect my um, British accent. And if she had a British accent, I don't know. Like I could just imagine myself riding a horse and then getting off and walking like That type of thing, you know, in those period dramas. I like the little detail of the sparkle and making it roughly at the end. And this was just like a very basic idea for it. Like I just used the most basic stitch, kept that going through out and then just add this little trim. But I feel like you can do so many different types of things with this. Like you could do different types of stitches. You could add layers to it. Like you could have this as the top layer and then attach the yarn at the bottom to make it really long. Of course, you can add a hood to put on as well. Like you can make it you can make it really cute. And I'm actually really proud of it.
The last design is a grimoire cover. I thought of the idea when I found my old journal filled with different information about my personality traits, tarot card interpretations, my crystal collection, and herbs and their magical and healing properties. I thought this would fit perfectly with the theme, so I went ahead and made a design incorporating the moon granny squares I did in my spring crochet video. I thought they'd be perfect for this, so I did them using a combination of one shade of purple and black as well as my sparkly yarn because I'm low key trying to use all of it if you haven't noticed and it works for the theme so why not after creating four granny squares i slip stitched all four squares together horizontally and then vertically i then placed my grimoire in the squares to see how it fits before single crocheting around one side until i reached the top opening I then single crocheted on one side of the top opening before getting to the side and single crocheting the sides together. I reattached my black yarn to the single crochet row and just did eight rows of half double crochet until the panel reached over the book. I then added a purple border with the sparkly yarn by single crocheting into each stitch around the cover. In the middle of the row, I chained six for the button holder thingy and then continued to work normal single crochets until the end of the row. I then sewed on my button in the middle of the seam and my grimoire cover was complete. I also sewed on a cute ribbon on top of the buttonhole and then realized that the moons were upside down. But hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to change it. it. It just, it gives it more personality at this point. The last piece I have to show is this book cover. It matches my cape unintentionally, but I think it's really cute. Um, I didn't want to go overboard with the sparkle on this one and... I wanted to make sure that the purple made it really pop. That's why I did the base in black and then added the purple as like the detail that really makes the purple stand out a lot more. And of course I added some sparkle to one row of black and then the last row of purple on that side and on the inside right here. And then I also sewed on this button and this ribbon. And I feel like this is really giving celestial witchy type book cover and this is actually the first book cover that i ever made i free handed it um all it is is just four granny squares and then you just make the flap and then that's it i feel like i should have decreased a little on the sides to make it round in more but if i look at it it actually does cover the sides the sides exactly so i think it's fine the way it is but my grimoire is perfectly safe and sound in this cover and i know whenever i see this cover with these upside down moons, I know that my grimoire is there. Thank you so so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what color and theme combo you want to see next. I still have a lot of the ones that you all mentioned in the last video written down, but just to double check to see which one you want to do next. Also let me know which one was your favorite in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!